we are here live once more going back into the segment with um, Captain Richardson, as we would call him, Roberto. That's um, right. He was just... Always. And we, we just got cut off because of some technical difficulties, but we're back on. Hopefully that we will get through this one-hour program without having to to come back on again and go to our next segment. So, um, um, as I was saying a while ago, Roberto, um, we have uh, Captain Richardson with us this afternoon. And um, and I want to make mention that we know it's going to be a very exciting program. Yeah. Seeing that Captain Richardson held many hats, as you said, a while ago. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, I was asking the question about where was were you born? Did I ask that question? No, no, yeah, where, 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 where were you born, Captain? I was born here in St. Martin in the St. Rose Hospital. St. Rose Street. Hospital? St. Rose Hospital. That, that, that's very strange. October 17th, 1951. Very strange because in our time, people used to be born at their homes. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. I remember in those days. Yeah. Not like the game. The, you know, like um, you got right into that from his birth. You know, um, Captain Richardson. You know, I, I was making some because this is a, this is a special uh, program for us because, as you know, we have a lot a lot of history with history. you, a lot yeah. of history with you um, as a as a big brother, as a father, as a mentor, mentor, mentor as an advisor. You know, mm -hmm. coming going growing up. But I don't want to get into the segment of. Um, be calling you as captain, being in the boys because because it's no secret to the, the to the to the general the, to the viewers okay, yeah. your history and your legacy and your your, your career, but um, I want to go back into um, your childhood days because um, there's a lot of in interesting um, segments of it because um, you come you you come from the area of uh, Marigat Hill Road Marigat Marigat Hill, Hill Road. and I just I like yeah. you to just you know just um, expound a little bit on. Um, what was it like growing up there? Your family, and especially the other family, um, family names that were so popular in Martin and were so popular back in the days. Growing up, a very, um, very close knit family. I can share with you from the very top of the hill, the Ramos, all the way on the hill come down. You had the King Sales. You then had Whiny, Rogers. A son, Claudius Rogers, just some years ago passed away. Yeah. After them, you had the Hodges, Eddie Hodge, Sylvia Hodge. Yes. And then you also have another Hodge family. And then you had Geneva. Geneva, From yes. Anguilla. Uh-huh. And after Geneva, you had the priests. T. Priest. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Their parents, yeah, their siblings. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thereafter, you had Albert Pontiflet. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which was the father of the former commissioner, Dennis Pontiflet. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And just <laughs> in the back of them, you had the Monsantos, Victor Monsanto. And thereafter, oh, you yeah, had yeah. Um, Cassie Scott, which was my uncle. Yeah. After that, you had the Myers. Myers. Myers, Adrian okay. Myers. Okay. The police officer. His yeah. parents. Okay. And thereafter, you had Honest Myers, Julius Myers. And after them, you had the Richardsons. So, wait, no, so now, so, so, so now, Captain, we, we, talking about all those families, how far down have you gone? Because are, down you, down are you still on the Marigold Hill Road there? Still on the Marigold Hill Road. Okay. Just in the corner. And for us, we had to go in and a little side road. In those days, there was no uh, mess up road. Correct. There was just one big estate. Okay. Later years, they developed, the area developed and you had all the inside roads. Which, and, which is known as St. Peter's, huh? St. Peter's, and that is coming okay. too. Okay, good. Go ahead. They're still coming down Marabat Hill Road. It was nothing but cultivation. Okay. And at the end of the cultivation, you had Sylvia Hodge, Eddie Hodge, and all of that cultivation. And then you reach down to where the well is. Uh -huh. And there is where we would take the bus, take the bus 
on Monday morning to Friday to go to school. And if the bus leave you, you had to walk to school. And where, 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 what was your school so My located? school then was then the Orania School. Orania School. And higher up you had the St. Joseph School. St. Joseph School. Those was the only two schools. And Phillipsville was just back street, front street. Front street. Back in the, the, I, back have a, in the I have a question, Captain. Going yes. back to, because, because we're going back, we're talking about your, your, um, your days growing up in, 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 Mar in Margaret, Margaret yes. Hill. And then um, I kind of missed from you because I wanted to hear you expound about also the um, coming on off of the out of the Margaret Hill Road onto the L.B. Scott Road cross there the 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 the, the, um, the home of the, um, the 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 Scots. Yes. Oh yeah. Right. That is still the, standing. Right in the corner where we took the bus, where there's a well now. Yes. Okay. And a lot of contractors takes water from that well. That is the well as children, we had to go and get water. There was no systems. So you, you draw the water, you fill your buckets up, and you go home and you pour the water in a tank. And your parents cover the tank with a white cloth that the flower used to come into. Okay. So that was to protect the water from regulars, all sort of thing. Then you had the L.B. Scott, Bernard Scott House, and next to his house, he had his field with his horses. And next to that, you had the La Vegas go right down. And across from, you had the government agriculture station where they oh, do yeah. provisions. I remember that. And on Saturdays, persons from all over would come to get their carrots, their lettuce, their peas, etc. Sweet potatoes, cassava. And there was also where the road now is, going into St. Peter's, there's what we call then a trough. A trough. A trough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they used to treat the animals. The animals. So you walk the animal down into the trough, and it was like a molasses light, eye light, and you bathe the animals in order to remove the ticks from the cows. So, so you are saying you bathe the animals? Because I, I, I'm trying to follow you in the history and all that. Um, when you say they bathe the animals, because I want to go somewhere with this. Um, where were you getting the water from? There was a well. There was a well on the property of the agriculture station, a government well. Okay. And they would draw the water from there, mix it in order to bathe the animals. See, so that entire well we have now, the FPT school. Uh -huh. That was the agriculture station for government. So they grew their fruits, their vegetables, but it was also a section that was used in order to treat of the animals. The animals. From ticks. Yeah. I have some, someone just came on, and that's Abigail Bridget Maynard. Um, I don't know if you know the person. They just say, wow, blessings to Captain, my old time brigade days. <laughs> Hi, Jeffrey Richardson. <laughs> you know, so they're Good. coming on. Good to They're see you. Little you. by little. Good yeah, to so hear you, you. You know the person. Yes. Okay. Just so, sharing a little history. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, Cap, so, yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm so curious about not only curious but interested in the, the history because um because you mentioned South South Reward. Because I can imagine that 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 what you just mentioned in terms of going back up from Margaret Hill Road to Margaret Hill with the removed back into down where your grandmother lived and all of that, and that was basically the only area that was inhabited. Yes, it was only inhabited. I can go further because I was mentioned, just in the corner you had the Hodges, and then you had the priests. Yes. After the priests you had the Martin Boroughs. That's right. And yes. after the Martin Boroughs you had Dennis Pontefet, Albert Pontefet. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. And thereafter yeah. you had the Richardsons, Mim mm -hmm. Richardson. Yeah. 
So Jose Richardson and their parents. Good. And thereafter you had Austin Richardson, which was my uncle. Oh yeah, Austin. Austin, Austin from GV. We were talking yes. about work at GV. Trying to figure out that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, thereafter, yeah, yeah. after him, you also had the Hodge, which was the father of Sylvia Hodge. Yes, Sylvia Hodge. Oh yeah, yes. Yes, yes. and yes. thereafter you had Reginald Pontefret. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Who okay. used to make blocks. Okay. And then you had the well, and right there is where we would take the bus. The rest of the property was only cultivation. So, okay. So my question is... So the rest of the property yeah. where, where you have all those houses was yes, only that cultivation? Was total cultivation. So there was no... Raising animals. And that was government land. So there was no St. Peter's, there was no retreat. Let's go back no. up. Let's go back to the salt reward. What was no not South Reward then? It was called Reward back in those days. Reward. What, what was it like up there? Were there any reward. inhabitants inhabitants in that area? Reward was just a cultivation area. Same thing like Simbi. Same thing, and I can tell you that because as children, my grandmother had a piece of land leased from government. Okay. And before going to school, we had to walk the animals to salt reward, to take them up into the hills. The goats, the cows, and several families had different portions of property. They were leasing from government. So the morning before you go to school, you go, you take the goats out, you take the sheep out, you take the cows out. On the lower side, you had Miss Ann Gibbs estate. And that was just a yes. cultivation. And that was where? On the other side where we have now retreat. Oh, retreat. Where we, sorry. Where we have Ebenezer. The Ebenezer. The Ebenezer. Okay. Ebenezer. That was nothing but bush. I'll give you a little story. My grandmother had, we had animals. Somehow the cow get loose. And we could not find the cow. <laughs> and we were all night. In those days, you make a torch on a bottle yes. and stick the corn shell inside of it with the kerosene and light it and put it on a stick. And you are through the bush looking for the cow because we could not go home and say to my grandmother, we can't find the cow. She sent us straight back. <laughs> Keep my love, my mommy, like. But those were the days, a yeah. lot of fun. Mama, you were taught to do that. We were taught, yes. I have, I have a question to ask you, Captain, because that's so important, because um, I like to go back into the history and compare where we are at present in order to, f to, to find a solution to a lot of what we're dealing with as a country at this moment. Um, salt reward, let's say reward coming down on that stretch going on the L.B. Scott Road into, into let's say, the Kulisak area. Um, is it a fact that that was always known as as areas of springs and wells and all that? And is it a fact that in the rainy season that the rainwater was coming down there and that was the rainwater that was flowing from there right down to where my, my parents live on the, in, on the bush road going into the fresh water pond? Can you say something about that? Indeed. Indeed. The... The whole cul de sac area was the bread basket on the dirt side. A lot of cultivation on either side. I mentioned earlier where the FBT school, yes. that was government land, but that was cultivation. Yes. Next to that was the Hazel's property, that right. was also cultivation. Uh -huh. Next to that, was the, the Boba Trees property and where they raised only animals. So that, that, that's what we call St. John's today. St. John's. Yes. And next to that you had Emilio Wilson. Correct. We are just only grass trees raising animals. On the other side, you had the Webster Estate, Ronald Webster, where they that bought... Was a little just a little bit lower down. So a little lower if you could go down. way back up, didn't yes. the, the Labegas have property? Come, come, okay. come into that. You go up. Oh, so great. you had 
where the ball field is now, that was cultivation of properties, raising animals. Yes. Webster. A little higher than that, you had where we have now Mary Francie. Mm -hmm. And after Mary Francie, you had Saunders. My late after uncle Mary. Bernard Scott. Yes. Had that. And that was raising animals as game. And next to that, you had what we call now the La Vegas. The correct. The La, La Vegas, Vegas property. Yeah, that's coming up. Coming up. Yes. And next yeah. to the La Vegas, at the end, just across from the agriculture station, you yes. had Bernard Scott. Correct, correct. With his that's home. Going back up there. Stands there. And next to that, you had where he used to raise his horses. And after that, where we call now Ebenezer. Ebenezer. The Ebenezer. That was we know it then as the San Gibbs. He stayed. Gibbs. Okay. The Gibbs. And that runs straight up to where I am now in Weymouth Hills. Weymouth Hills. Great, 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 okay. great, great. So as children, we roam. We pick wood, we pick fruits, we did all sorts of things. We cut wood in order to make a living, to make coal keys. So that the end you could burn your coal and then go to town and sell your coal. You cook on the coal or you cook. sell you, you sell as well. You burn the wood, get your coal, and as children, once the coal keep was you take it down, you spread it out, pick the coals, you bag it, and you put it on your head. And you like like you say that as children and, and growing up in that those days, because you've mentioned a lot of families um, coming out of that area. Um, can you just mention a few few um, friends coming out of those families, young friends that you grew up with, very yes. popular that the people of St. Martin, some of us will know from back then, or for, for some of us, it be, could be our grandfather or great uncle, you know, so can you mention some of those names for, the, for our viewers and our listeners? Some of the persons that I remember quite well as now past, Jose, Richardson, uh -huh. Clarence Martin Barrow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dennis Pontiflet. Oh, Dennis. Dennis no, Pontiflet. No, no, no. Yeah, correct. We all grew up together. So, so you, you, you all yeah, very, yes. you all De very close. Then, very you? close, yes. Okay, good, good. Okay. <laughs> Dennis Pontiflet. You also had the priests, Felicia priests. Yes. Those priests in them. Uh -huh. You had the Hodges. Yes. Eddie Hodge, Ludwig Eddie Hodge. Hodge. Ludwig and them, oh, yes. Yeah, Ludwig yeah, Hodge. Hodge. We all grew up That's together. That's Ludwig Hodge. Um, we just have the Monsantos. Vivian Monsanto, she just correct. passed. Also, Viv correct, Vivian. Okay. And then my aunt, Glorine. You said the Scots, you said. And you said then the we had the Myers, the Scots, the Rumors right up on the hill. And the King Saves. The King Saves. The King Saves. The King Saves also. The King Saves also. I can share with you, every Saturday, we had to go to Marigot via Lock Alone, walk in Marigot Hill, and you were glad when you reached at the top of the hill. Like Ned Ramu's father. Correct. And the correct. mother. Yes. You stopped by, you were able to get a glass of water to drink because you was walking down the hill to go to Marigot. I was gonna just to ask bring you that. your provisions up. And you were glad when you reached at the top of the hill to get a glass of water. <laughs> Good afternoon, can I get a glass of water? Yes. You know. And those was days fun. Going to school as well. John yeah. Ramu. I was just talking Ruby about Ramu. Going we to all went to school together. Yeah. But how, what so, was it back in those days going to school? Well, we catch the bus, as I said, by the well. Yeah. And the rest we had to walk. Yeah. And if you were not on time for the bus. Yeah. The bus go leave, leave bus you. Bus go leave you. You have so to you walk to the back and tell your parents the bus going to leave you. So you got to walk. You get a lot of licks. And still had to go to school. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine that. I give you another story. One evening, doing my shopping, we would remember Jack Tool's store, where Food Center used to be. I know Food Center. And we would do the shopping, and there was a little run down a square. And in those days, you leave your bags with your coats right under the tree. Go to town. Yes. Come back. And, you, and you your bag. With all your, your right coach, your stuff. 
was right there. And one evening, returning back home, it was dark, and there was a nightclub at St. John's Ranch. Correct. Oh, yeah, 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 that's it correct. John, yeah. And Sir Sev, he now lives from middle region. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was riding a motorbike. And somehow, he collided with me. You kidding me? He fell on the ground. Wow. And he said, come, you throw me down. And I set off for running, jumped over the wall and hide between the bushes. <laughs> and didn't go back, went home and told my grandmother. And only the next morning, I went back and picked up my stuff. And it was there. And the stuff was still there on the road. Wow. That, wow. I share that to show you or to tell you how it used to be how it used to be so no, nobody picked Nothing, up people to... no one pick up, pick up anything I had my entire stuff was there and my gauntlets but I'm grateful that we were able and after that I said to my grandmother me walking the road no more dark at night yeah, but that was the, the captain. That because that was a Saint Martin. Then those were and the days. Yes, yes, correct, correct, correct. The those Saint Martin, and I enjoyed them. Then, then let's go because we, there's so many areas that we want to touch on with with you, and I know Jeffrey is excited about asking some other areas, but I just yeah. want to keep it in in, in, in sequence. Um, after after your early years growing up in Margaret Hill uh, Road, and then you talked about your the school days. School days. And so, um, I just want to get into your a bit of your your career. Because I remember, cause could you could you could you could could you elaborate a bit? Um, because I can remember that you um one of the one of the pioneers of uh, starting at, as employees at um the old Lance Radio. Lance, yes. What is what was it like then, and what role did you play in Lance Radio at that time? Well, after completing school, I saw a job. When you say completing school, which after school? Complete, I completed the Marvel. Okay. The Pastor Newman is Marvel. Yes. Yeah. And after completing that, not having parents, not having the funds, in order for me to go abroad, and being the eldest of my grandmother's children, yeah. she raised me, three of us, I felt I had an obligation yes. to look after my grandmother. After her, yes. It's mommy, she, eh? yes. Yes, mommy. <laughs> And then I applied for a job at Lance Radio. Yes. Leslie Kanegita was then the manager. Okay. Leslie Kanegita. And I got accepted, employed as a telegram. Oh, I remember that. Telegram operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would stand at the window, <laughs> and in those days, persons wanted to send a telegram to Curacao. Aruba, Bonaire, Sabre Station, to Holland. Yeah. <laughs> so you come, I gave you a pen, you write down what you wanted to say. <laughs> I accept it, I count the words, make the charges and say to you, Roberto, 10 guilders, <laughs> collect the money, punch it into the cashier, Yes. wrote it down, and then go on the telex machine. A telex machine. Type it up and send it to either Curacao, Aruba, Bonaire, Holland, wherever. And I did that for thirty-three years. Wow. So you were saying you were saying, but you were saying then then um you were you charged by word? By word, yes. So you could word or by letter. So you, you you couldn't No no, it was charged by, by word. word. So if you say Mr. Roberto Richardson, Congo Beck, 10, Willem Start, Curacao. Yes. So, Mr. Roberto Richardson. Every word. Every word. Every And the only thing that Willem Start, Curacao became one word because it was the capital. It was the capital. Okay. And the office was in Willem Start. So, so that was con Willem Start was counted as one, one word, word. double. So so the, the message is I mean and then the, the, it was then 
meet me, await a call on Sunday afternoon, four o'clock. Just getting to the I point, basically. That yes, no long story. Eki Richardson. Eki, you talk no, about that. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Just joking. Just okay. joking. <laughs> and we send that. You get that message, and so for five o'clock, four o'clock on Sunday afternoon, Eki would come to Lance Radio office. You kidding me? He would say to the cashier, <laughs> I have to make a call to your office in Curacao to my son, Roberto Richardson. Yes. I, in turn, would wow. call Curacao. Good afternoon. Can you check if you have in your office Roberto Richardson waiting for a call yes. from wow. Eki Richardson? <laughs> So, so. And they say, yes, all right, I'll call him back. <laughs> and then I say to the, cop, the op telephone operator, please call Curacao. Eki Richardson is waiting for a call from his son. So, so basically, Captain, <laughs> Captain, let me even yes. say, because I'm trying to, you know, I love we that. a bit after that time, you know, but I always heard about it because we were very young in those days. So, but, is it is it correct to say that in that function that you had, you were able to basically see everybody's situations, messages, messages oh, private, yes. so you knew what was going on in every household? That's you, it. You, but I'll tell you this, you had to take an oath. I was going to ask you that. You had to take oh. an oath then by the governor. Oh, okay. What you see... That is not remain there. Okay. Under no circumstances could you reveal what you saw. What you saw. So it's just like a is that just like a doctor is function. Yes. You know with the uh, yes. In those days it was privacy. Very. And if you share that information, you lose you your job. could lose your job. And there was. The possibility for imprisonment. Well, Whoa. But I can say, for my 33 years, we never reach to that, that stage. Thank God that was those days because if that was these days, I think, boy, a lot of people would be in prison today. <laughs> those were the days you were. Oh, me, me never yeah. are going to say hello to you from, from hello to you, me, I mean, St. Never. Thomas Virgin Islands. So, so, so while we while we on your while we on your your career at Atlantis Radio, because um during that time too, I know that you would have experienced a lot of changes because there was a Lance Radio, there was an telecom. You know, we started to have yes. our own telephone company and all that. Can you do, can you remember the history on that? Do, do you have any any? Well, let me just, were you part of that transition? Or were you all, had you already left um, no. the, the telecommunication world? I began with Lance Radio. From Lance Radio, we changed over to and telecom. And telecom. Yes. And then these are all federal, um, federal. government companies. Yes. And then we changed over to UTS. Oh, UTS. Yeah. yeah, UTS. When we came, and telecom had over Telem, but I did not go over to Telem. Oh, you stayed with Antelecom? I stayed with UTS. From with UTS. UTS. Okay. I stayed with UTS. So the and federal... I completed my years of service with, with UTS. UTS. So, so you, so all of the, because I was curious before coming to this this interview, this live stream, live stream. So I you never worked to Yeah, I wanted to know if you had you had known no. all of the transitions. So you, you never worked till them, like Jeffrey is asking. You never worked till them, so you stayed with um, UTS. UTS. Well, Lance Radio and Telecom UTS. Oh. At one time, Telem was part of oh, the St. Martin Telephone Company was part of the the whole thing. But later on, there was a separation, separation. and St. That. Martin Telephone Company came into being and they went their path and UTS took over. So the UTS remained the federal government and the island government yeah. Took back their telephone company because UTS and UTS still exists. UTS is still yes. a yeah, competing, competing okay, yes. telecommunication, telecommunication um, company yes. to to to. Yeah. So to all tell my years of service was with the federal government. Federal government. Yes. 
So what was it like that? I mean, um, so what were some of the what were some of the high highlights or the areas of let's say achievements in telecommunication that you've experienced over the years? Because because you see, you've experienced so much evolving in in in, in telecommunication. Yes. Um, what were the things that, that that was most memorable to you? For me, taking the telegrams, making the calls. Waiting to come for the calls. When today you can sit on your home, yes, and make your telephone calls. You can sit on your phone from your home on your porch and use your cell phone to make contact all over the world. Yeah, that is a massive improvement. You no longer have to go to the telecommunication office. No. Now you can sit in a leisure and you have the ball at your fingertips. At your fingertips. When you know, if you Captain, you know, because um, I, I really want to quickly, I'm asking this question quickly because I'm so curious because um, all of us are different ages, you know, and I'm um, just, we were just talking about your, your son a minute ago and they, they in a new technology period and they can just do things, bap, 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 you know, you know, how was the, these type of te te technology transitions for you? Were they something that you could, could cope with easily or was it uh, something that you had to, to deal with step by step? Um, but you get my point where I'm going from. I must admit that the company leadership did offer us training. Oh, training. the training was The correct. training to help prepare yourself. Fortunately for me, I've had the opportunity to work with Leslie Kanigita, mm -hmm. Castel Gums, oh, yeah. um, Curtis Haynes, those were persons, mm -hmm. those were persons who offer us the training. Mm -hmm. um, you were able to go to Kurosawa or Aruba to further advance yourself. Mm -hmm. I should also indicate that during my 33 odd years with the company, I had the opportunity to go to Sabre and work in Sabre. Okay. When so. the operators there would go on vacation, okay. they would take someone from St. Martin and send them over. To run the operation over there. To run the operation there. Wow. Okay. And the same how long that, that, that lasted? And that the was... Vacation. That would yeah. last for two weeks, probably two months. Okay. A period of time. And in Stacia as well. Some others had the opportunity to go to Bonaire, but I never got that opportunity to go to Bonaire. And they gave us the opportunity to go to Curacao also to follow courses to further develop yourself so that you would be able to handle the situation. Captain, I have a question to ask you while we were on the same topic. Um, you said you spent 33 years in, um, in the telecommunication um, yes. world. Um, was it was it a career that you enjoy um, being in? Um, do you have any regrets? Do you feel that that was the direction that you wanted to go, or was there any other area of career that you may have wanted to to, to pursue? To be honest, I wanted to do teaching. Okay. Oh yeah. But <laughs> my grandmother, my mother, grandmother. We were not financially fortunate. Fortunate. Yes. And we did government scholarship. Yes. My imagine. brother John, on the other hand, he got a scholarship to go to Holland. Yes. But in my case, I did not get. And probably it happened for a reason. My grandmother raised three of us, and I felt that as the eldest of the children, you were responsible. I had that close communication. Bond, yeah, that bond. bond. I felt yes. that since she took us from our mother, raised us, someone had to look after her. And I felt that as the eldest of the children, you would have wanted that. Felt, that was my lot. You know, that is something that gives and you I can tell you, I have no. Regrets. No regrets. No regrets. No, we have heard that so many times, Captain, because um, everywhere or every time we have a, a program like this, 
we realize that the elder of the family is always would be the one that would stay back with the parents to take care of things while the younger ones would then continue to pursue their, their education. Um, we're fortunate then to pursue the education. So that is then, that would, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't call it a, um, was it something that you gladly did, like you said you did? Oh, I, and, um, I did it out of love. Yes. My grandmother made a lot of sacrifices. Yes. Well, a lot of sacrifices. And, and I like, felt we, we, I had I had to honor. Yes, 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 yes. It's very, it's very, yes, very, but I know it's very emotional. I, and I'll tell you this, you know, probably I shouldn't, but when I said to my grandmother that I was getting married, and then you said to my wife, I did the reception, the engagement in our yard. You kidding me? Wow. And she said to Rosa, you come to take my grandson away from me. I could imagine what that was. <laughs> but I must admit, she welcomed my wife with open arms. Yeah, great. When once we got married, which is all part of the wedding, and we went to Colby to live, and I had to leave Colby every morning, five o'clock, to come St. Peter's to open for my grandmother. Nobody else could do it. Wow. Give her her breakfast and to make sure she was alive. And to be the last to close the house. And that was every day? And that was every day. Yeah, if I was working, shift, I had to leave or ask someone to hold on just to make sure my grandmother was talked in. I have a question to ask you about about my mom, yeah? If I, I, I'm, I, I'm just thinking here, the, the two areas of, because you talked about a lot of things about Miami, I just want to just bring them up. And two things that st grandma. stood out, yeah, when I talk, yes, his yeah, grandmother, yeah, yeah, Miami, Miami, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami, they call her Miami's grandmother. Um, two things that stand out here, uh, I believe with her, with you, is that while she was a loving grandmother, or disciplinary. Ah, yes. Yeah. No mistake about that. We know the stories that you always told sure, us over sure. the years. She was... She was very strict. Very strict. And she would think it nothing if you misbehave or were disobedient to give you a good lesson. And sometimes <laughs> she'd put you on gravel rocks to needle down, stretch your hand out, and two big rocks in your hand. That was the discipline. But at the end, yes, I'll tell you one story. I misbehaved and she gave me a listing. A listing? A listing. Oh, listing. Licks. Listing. Licks. You call it licks back in the licks days. <laughs> with a rope and in the rope was a piece of wire. And somehow the wire stick me right here. Oh, God. When she saw the blood, she said, oh, God. A child who's the eye. Wow. And she doctored it. She got her salt water and her olives. She doctored it. Tend to me. Yeah. They didn't go to no doctor. I'm still alive. Man. At this stage. Man. And from that day on, I never got in more leaks with a rope. That was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Those great but days. Those great days. I can look back. She was a loving. Yes. Caring. Yes. Mother. Mm -hmm. Grandmother. For her children and for her grandchildren. Great, great, yeah. great. No, we, we want to, because we, we need to speed along, yeah, okay. Captain, because there's so many areas that we want to touch. We, we want to go into your, um, your, Career, I would say, uh, in 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 Boys Brigade as a captain, I wanted to just quickly touch on what that was like from where you started in, in the, the Boys Brigade, and from there I want you to jump right into that the affiliation of the, with the Methodist Church, the Phillipsburg Methodist Church, going into the Saint Peter's Methodist Church, and the role that you played and and all of the position that you held, because there was so much, there were so many 
areas that you function in. So I wanted to just go into that to that history so that we can get into that uh, topic where we want to touch on your family. Well, the Boys Brigade was introduced to the island by the Reverend John Adolphus Gums. One minister who came and served our circuit and encourage the young people to get involved in the life of the church. One year we organized a cross-country walkathon, the French Brigade. What year was that, all this? This was, I think, in 1972. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the French boys would walk the Dutch side. We'd meet at the frontier. Okay. The French boys would walk to the Dutch side. The Dutch, the Dutch boys, boys walk to the, the French side. side. And while we was going down, what they call Walla Walla Hill. Yes. It was a dangerous area. It's much better now. A car came down and lost brakes. And I was leading the Dutch brigade. The car struck me. Oh, oh, I remember. And they end up taking me to the hospital. I spent some days there, and then my grandmother came and said she wanted me on the Dutch side. And she took me out and brought me to St. Rose Hospital. Yes. I came out. And after three weeks in the hospital, we still had the cow dung or the filth Filt. that was still in my head because they Whoa. could not do anything. They had to, they tend to you, but sure, with sure. a right towel around your head. And after that experience, my close call, I surrender make a commitment in my life to Christ. Amen. That was the change in point. Yes. Amen. We continue serving in the Boys Brigade. Fortunate. I was captain and coordinator for Boys Brigade work on the island and I was able to, with the help of Captain Boseman, yes. Captain take the Boseman. boys to Singapore. Yeah. Take the boys to Malaysia. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Take the boys to England, England, yeah. Denmark, wow, Denmark, <laughs> Bahamas, yes, wow. And in 1983, organized on Saint Martin an international camp, yes. Where today, on the Wilson Estate, they have the tennis field. Okay. That field was nothing but a grass piece. Yes. And Emilio was my godfather, and I said to him, we are organizing an international camp. We need your permission to use the grounds. He said, no, no, not, not, my, not my grounds. In those days, there was a lot of what we call manginator trees. Yes. I got his permission, cut them down, burned them. And during the term that Mr. Ralph Richardson was the Lieutenant Governor, yeah. he was able to open the first international camp for Boys Brigade oh. on St. Martin. It was not the same year of the, the cent centenary? Centenary, centenary, centenary yes. It's the centenary was, yes, yes. In, in Scotland. In Scotland. Yes, and then afterward we organized a national camp. We had persons oh, after you organized a yes. national camp here. Yes, and we okay. got persons from Denmark, from wow. England, Bahamas, Singapore. We all assembled. Oh, that was Emilio Park. Emilio, yes. yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember. And Ralph Richardson opened that camp for us. How many boys back there? How many attend attendees? About one hundred and twenty. Wow. Yeah, I remember, yeah. That. Yeah. I remember that. And we camped under the open field. Yeah, yeah. But with tents. With tents. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. 
like while while on the whole boys wiki because um we I, I was so eager to 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 ask you about what was it like working um with back with, with the girls brigade and then specifically with um with um the late captain um, Yulani yes. Myers and also um Mr. Stelma Kemal Gums also I should also I say fortunately Reverend Gums introduced brigade work both boys and girls brigade work during his ministry okay. at Fittisville. Mr. Etienne Myers was a major Mr. Myers, yes. Okay. in the police force. And Reverend Gums was a very outgoing person. No, you when you're talking about Mr. Etienne Myers for, for our viewers now, you're talking about the late Mr. Etienne Myers, who uh, was the the father of, father of Tochi, Tochi, Tochi and Charlie Myers, Myers, Myers and all Myers, of them. Yes, yes. 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 He, so he became the captain of the boys, and his wife became captain of the girls. <laughs> Okay, okay. And I was one of the lieutenants. Okay. He did it for a couple of years and yes. then he recommended that I take over. Take over from him. Yes. Okay. And we continued that work in relationship all through the years. Wow. So whatever the boys wherever the boys go, the girls go. Etc. Okay. And that because of the close work in relationship that you had we have had. So so while on that, um can you mention? I, I hope I'm not asking you too much. Can you mention some of the um, some of the the the, the officers of, that did work under you back in the days? Because just before we started the the the, the, the live stream, we mentioned a, a couple of uh, names of very prominent people in the community. Some of the persons that work, Cyril Brick. Cyril Brick, oh, yeah, yes, Cyril yes, yes, was yes. one of the officers. Roy Andre, Roy Andre, Andre was yes, also yes, one of the officers. Yes, yes, yes. Leroy Brooks, your brother, yes, was one correct, of the correct, officers. Correct. Was correct. one of the days. officers, yes. young officers. Yeah. In the girls brigade. I also had Helen. Oh, Helen, Helen Lake. Lake, Lake, um, Hazel. She was yeah. also yeah. one of it. Sheila, and Sheila Kelly, Sheila Kelly, Kelly. Yeah, Sheila yeah. Kelly, yeah. Patricia also, Phillips. Yeah, yeah. They yes. were all officers also at work. Also, Bueller, 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 They were all at work with me in the boys' brigade. Unfortunate, it was the light that when I retired, James Gums yeah. took, over took over as captain of the boys' brigade. I remember also because there, there were two other um, officers in the boys' brigade that I would that that I'd like to single out to because. Because I, I, I was on them also, and they were very, very strict and firm in those days working under you. Um, Mr. Dollison, uh, Mr. Marvin oh, Mr. Dollison. Marvin Dollison, Dollison. Marvin Marvin Dollison Marvin. was my yeah. first, <laughs> my first, <laughs> my first staff sergeant. Yes, staff, staff sergeant. sergeant. My I remember first staff, staff sergeant. 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 Was, you mentioned that. Yes, yes, Marvin, you know. I Some learned so much ago. from him, you know. <laughs> It was Some Marvin and somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And was together also, with him. Yeah, Marvin and also. And your brother. Um, Leroy. Leroy. Yeah. Leroy Brooks. Yeah, yeah. Those was my first. But, 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 but there was an, um 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 his his lives he lives on the eighty 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 road um. Rudolph Brown. Brown. Rudolph Brown. 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 You talk about Mister Brown too. Oh, so you can yes. forgive Ruba. 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 Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So yeah. yes. those but, were some correct, of the correct. persons but you, we work with. And, and you work when you also on radio. Correct, yes, correct. correct. <laughs> but I, I want to hear the story that you were going to say about um, Mr. Marvin Dollarson. Marvin Dollarson, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was my first lieutenant, and we had a very close working relationship. Some years ago, just recently, they, they organized a Thanksgiving. And they invited him. He sat at the back. At the back. <laughs> And when he come out, Captain Richardson, you forget that I was your first South Sergeant. <laughs> but I must admit, those were the days in the sense of respect. Respect. Even self in your own. For yes, all our yes, yes, young yes. people. Yes. Adults now. Yeah. But the sense of respect that has gone from those days to this day. You all will meet me. It is still Captain Richardson. That's yeah. right. Marvin, 
my staff sergeant. Captain Richards, Captain, now for you. Yeah, 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 but it's yeah. sense of discipline. Yeah. It, it, I can it, it, still it remember there's one of our boys, Ashton, walking down the road with a bear and just spot me in the distance. He drew it. He got rid of it. <laughs> and he pushed the hand behind his back. What is that you have in your hand? And I said to him, he said to me, a bear. I said, try it out. <laughs> but I share that to show the sense yes, of respect. 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 Respect and discipline. Yes. They are big young men, but even but still. today, the discipline and respect they still carry on for the officers. But I remember even because of you, I started just playing piano. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You, 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 know, you, you were the one that sent me to piano lessons. <laughs> you see, you're trying to help your young people because I always felt that where I did not reach, someone to get there, the room, yeah, yeah. do it. Do it. Do it. If you can change a life, do it. Do it. Because somebody took time out to, to, you to help me. Help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that has always been my philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody yeah, yeah. helped me. I, in turn, help somebody try else. to help somebody. somebody else. And God has been good. Yeah, Amen. God, Amen. 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 Has been like good. You. Yeah. And I am grateful. The long my life's path. Mm. Might say I've been perfect. But the long my life's journey, I've tried to help no, you did my well. young people. Yes. You did the well. journey. So many of us that can no, attest to that. Well. Yes. Hobby yeah. Marlin. Oh, oh yeah, Harvey yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harvey Richard yeah. Marlin. Harvey, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, fellow young people. Today you can look who at we are had in the boys' brigade. Along with yourselves, yeah, who have made something for life. Himself, yes. when Frankie Myers meets me, Frankie, yes, he say, "Also, shouldn't thank you." Correct. And you know, when you look back, they have made something out of, yes. them, out out of themselves. themselves. I say, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, for the lies you have, have touched, touch uh, along the ice journey. But somebody first helped me. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. somebody first helped me. I was able along my journey to others. So we're back on. So now what was gonna ask you sorry, um, sorry if we had a little interruption there, but we're back on live. And I was gonna say I, I was just saying to you, Captain Richardson, is that I followed your your career, your your life um, um, over the years, and I you gave so much to everyone. You gave so much to everyone, you know. And um, I I wanted to touch touch on the touch on. I want you to to, to talk a little bit about your days uh, back back then, even starting out in Methodist Phillipsburg Methodist Church, and um, all what you've achieved. Because I know you were you were a society steward, you're a circus steward, you were so many different. Um, you had so many different positions in the Methodist Church, um, even local preacher. Can you can you talk about the, um, your time, or let's say, because it's still going on? You're still um, still a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to talk about how that has been. Fortunately, during the ministry of the Reverend John Adolphus Combs, Reverend Combs encouraged the young people in his day to take an active role mm. in the life of the church. Of the church. Yes. Mm. And he was one minister who pushed us. Yes. Mm. We had local preachers. I can remember Clarence Maddenborough, now deceased, myself along with others. And he encouraged us mm. to take to listen for the call and to respond when God calls. And I follow that through. And because of that, you were able to 
be of service to serve others, not only in the church, but in the community. Mm -hmm. And with saying that, persons, we were visiting the homes, the hospital, I've had the privilege to receive many calls in the night or during the day. Whoa. Could you come? My father, my mother is ill. Could you come? More for prayer. Just to pray. Just to pray. He would come. And the joy for me was to hold someone's hand. Just to offer a word of prayer. Mm. At times you see them quietly. Knowing that they that knowing that they're passing. Mm. And other days, other times, you they see them get back. Rise back up. Rise back. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And you see. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Saying that. Ministers encourage people, young people, knows these Reverend Gums and them, to take an active role in the life of the church. But I have been privileged to work in the Phillipsburg Methodist Church. But we had a Sunday school, which met for a number of years under a tumbling tree. Mm -hmm. The late Richard Hazel had donated a piece of land for the Sunday school. But when we attempted to build the church during the ministry of the Reverend Hodge, we discovered that the land was too small for the size of the building. So we had purchased a piece of property in Betty's estate yeah. to erect yeah, the school. Yeah, correct. And what we did, the I was school, then so the school. You're talking about the Mac school. The Mac school. The Mac school. Okay. What we did then, we did a groundbreaking ceremony for our church and for our school. For school. With the help of government, the Dutch government, we were able to get the school and join the ministry of the Reverend Wilfred Hodge. Oh, yes, I remember. Yes, we erected Hodge. the St. Peter's Methodist Church. Okay. The structure. The structure it was very two story building, which you which was used for worship on Sunday and during the week. There were six classrooms in the structure. Yes, I remember, I remember, I remember that because I'll be checking okay. the time. I just, yeah. I just want to back, back, back up a little quick, quickly. There, you, you touched on the, the Methodist Agog Center, which is the Mac. What role, just quickly, um, Captain, what role did you? play in the starting of the Methodist Agog Center in St. Martin? Well, I served as circus show, and it was during my time as circus show that we were able to start the Mac, yes. the Mac during Mac. the ministry of the Reverend okay. John Acombs. And as a youngster, I was encourage young people. And oh, so yes. you give it your full support. So, yeah. and I close. We, we are grateful. Our chapel got destroyed in 1995. The two-story building, as I mentioned earlier. We built another building, which we were worshiping in. In 2017, that got destroyed with the hurricane. At present, we have plans in with government to erect our new chapel at St. John's, it's a story building, where the hall will be downstairs and the chapel will be upstairs on the piece of property that we purchased for that purpose and that will be in St. John's. Captain, I know that we are pressed for time, but I cannot allow you, Jeffrey cannot allow you to get away that we're going to close this program without asking you to talk about family life. Because in earlier I said to you, 
that you were giving so much of yourself to everyone and in the church and to the boys brigade and to your, your, your career and to everything. I never thought that you were going to get married. And here you are now, a married man with kids. Can you talk about your family? For years. Can you talk about your family, your wife, your children? And well, how, how, how is married life doing for you? Very well. Very well. I have a loving, caring wife. Yes. The mother of my children. I adore them. I have four children. Mm -hmm. Three girls, one boy. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother always said to Rosa, girl, go and make your children. <laughs> and just before she died, go make the boy. And you know, mommy died September, Jeremiah born January. Wow. January the same year. The following year. The following, the following year. year. Wow. Yeah, she died September and he born. And when the other children are afraid to go to the house, my grandmother's house, Jerry goes to the house. And, and, on the TV, and he said, this is my mammy house. Yes. So he has somehow, he has that connection. connection okay. With, his, her. with her, yes. His mammy. He believed, he never met her. Wow. But he has that spiritual connection. That connection. And I, the day, the night that Jerry born, and I held him, my thought flew black. And my grandmother. When I said to her, Rosa's pregnant. And she said to me, that is going to be the boy. That is going to be the boy. That is going <laughs> to be the boy. She, he died. She died September. Sherry born January the 1st. The following and it was the boy. And it was the boy. It was the boy. Great. So I gave God thanks. Okay. Yes. I have a caring family. You know I am very strong, Will. <laughs> Very strong. Of course, we know that. <laughs> Everybody know that. But I'll tell you this. But I adore yeah, yeah. my wife yes. and my children. Yes. And they are my lifeline. I have helped everybody else. That's but right. But now it's time, it's, time it's time for my family. And I give God thanks. I started Amen. late. But nothing happens before it's time. Before it's time. And I have a loving, caring wife. One more question, Captain, you know, because I know Jeffrey is nudging me for the time. Yeah, um, you know just one. I think you were, you were, were you knighted by Her Majesty oh, yeah. Queen Beatrix? Or was yes, it? I do have an honor I received from the Queen for my contribution. You to the community. And community work. Oh yeah, it doesn't talk. I, I saw that. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it is an honor, and I think it is because of my service to my community. Yes. Mm -hmm. But above all, a program like this, I see persons like Jeffrey and Junior. I get goosebumps. When I see persons like Davy Woods, yes, and I see others in the community, and I say to myself, Nathaniel, after all, you were not so bad. No, you were good. Your life, your witness, has touched many, many of many. our young people. Yes, many, many young people. And when I see young people. Bring others. Officer Richardson, good afternoon. I salute you. It shows a sense of discipline and yes, respect. respect. Yes, yes. That our young people have. And to you, Roberto, Jeffrey, I want to say thanks. No problem. May God continue to bless, guide, protect, and keep you. And above all, keep our youth mm -hmm. and our sweet St. Martin land. Yeah, yeah. Our future yeah. of this land 
is in all your hands. It's dependent on us. The, before, oh, before, uh, I, before, I, before, I, before, before I close up, I want to say a couple of things from some people that was on Joseph Wilson. Yes. Um, he said um, to tell you hello from the Boy Brigade time. He remember, oh, yes, remember those Wilson. times. Don't yeah, down. but he lives in Holland. In Holland. I'm a Charles, your neighbor. Yes. Um, I I think um, your brother Harold is on. Okay. Yes. Looking at you, Kat, Kathleen Richardson. Kathleen Curacao. Kathleen, sorry. Oh, she's from Curacao. Okay, Kathleen. Lives in Curacao. Yeah. Yes, Curacao. Yes. Orella Cox, of course, your neighbor. Yes. And I want to say special yes. good afternoon to William Badminton because he's always yes, on. Yes, he's one of our. He's one of our. Always on. Was that? William Badminton. Okay. He's, 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 he's in the Netherlands. He's in Netherlands. Yeah, he lives in the Netherlands. He lives in the Netherlands. But he's, he's constantly on, on every on program. Yeah. So yeah. I like I like to give him a little acknowledgement. You know, for Congratulations being, and yes. welcome to all of you. It's good yeah. to and see Cleo, you all. Cleo Cardi as well said good afternoon. Cardi. Yeah, talk Cleo Cardi. Yes, Cleo. Yeah, Cleo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I have I have one question, one yes. last question before I give it over to, to, to our host, Jeffrey, to close off. Um, Captain Nathaniel Richardson, you have done so much. You've achieved so much. You've contributed so much to St. Martin and to all of us who have passed through your yeah. life. Um, my question to you is this, with all of that, is there one particular thing that you still would like to achieve as part of the legacy of Captain Nathaniel Richardson that you have not achieved as yet that you're working on? The one thing that. But uh, not. No, I have no Okay, grand good. Jury. Okay. <laughs> no grand jury. One thing, as captain and as one of the stewards of the Methodist Church and as a lead preacher, that I would love to see accomplished is the erection. The erection of our new St. Peter's Methodist Church in St. John's. That for me means a lot. With our chapel being destroyed in 95, yeah. with our chapel being destroyed in 2017, and with us worshiping now under the canopy of the John Gums campus. I will leave no stone unturned but to get the approval from government for the erection of our new chapel at St. John's. So your plans are already in? My plans are in. I pray to God that I can get a call anytime stating my the plans have been approved. Yeah. Why? That for me would mean a lot because a lot of the elders Bono. who were with us at the beginning yeah, yeah. Yes. have now passed. Yes. I was just a youngster in those days. Today, I'm an elder. <laughs> I'm an elder, and I will. I pray to God every day to make a way possible for us. Captain, Amen. on your behalf, during this live stream, I would like to call out, um, in particular, the um, acting um, SG of um, Vromi. Uh, who is in charge of the finalizing the approval for your permit, Mr. Kortruan, Engineer Kortruan. He is from your neighborhood. Um, you call him Mom, Mom, Mommy Boy or something so, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. As well as as the minister um, of um, Vromi, um, Minister uh, Duran. He's a York. Yes. That is um, the, 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 the Henrietta. 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 She was also part of the All girls' parade. So I'm saying that oh, you have... Yeah. you so. The, the wish that you have is all in the hands of a lot who have who have 
you built on the on the you over the years. And so I think that this will be a way that all of us in that we are in right now, with the strike of a pen, will be able to contribute and make that dream a reality for you. Thank you. And whatever contributions can be made, whatever help can be given for us to see that come a reality. I will be eternally grateful on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Patmore Henry, yes. and on behalf of our entire Methodist Church, and in particular, our St. Peter's congregation. congregation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that we, for us. Before you even said I had a feeling was that. Yes. I just had a strong feeling that you would have said that. That means a lot. Yeah, that I know means it means a lot to all of you, and in particular to yourself, yeah. um, Captain. I, you know, let me just, just to share this with one of our elder members passed a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. Sister Delhi Baptist. Mm -hmm. And as a youngster, I can still remember her going in her cottage meetings in those days. And she said to her daughter, she used to sing in the choir, called Brother Richardson and gave him my gown. Next, Brother Richardson has to do remember you. They remember. I can see, I really sense, I'm already sensing in the spirit that you will achieve that, Captain. I believe that you will, and I know that you will. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to say, Jeffrey Jr., my fellow brigaders, thank you all very much. Continue. And I thank your parents. Your mother's still alive. Yes. Your father. It's turning in his grave. Of this type of program that you are here to do, to share with our community. With the world. With the world. Thank you. I wish you continued health. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you God's grace. And I wish all of us a blessed day. Sweet St. Martin. The lovely rock. The lovely rock. Right. Islands in the sun. Islands in the sun. And from yeah. Weymouth Hills, looking down. Thank you all very much. Yeah, we would like to thank you as well, um, Captain, for this lovely program. I think everybody really, really was excited about this program. A lot of people came on. And um, I couldn't mention everyone. Because not everybody said something on the program, but those persons that make mention of your name, I I made sure that I that I mentioned them. Shermina has now just came on and say and saying thumbs up, up to you. Okay, Shermina. Because you did a tremendous, tremendous job here this afternoon. Thank you very much. And um my co host, um again, tremendous job. Well done. And we would like to close out the the program by saying um, all the best to you and to your family and to the, the church that you you come from. And that whatever Roberto said a while ago, that, that will come to pass, that that last achievement that you're looking forward to will come to pass. God bless you. God bless him, Martin. God bless us all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.